Guten Tag and bienvenidos, listeners, and welcome to episode four of Uber Cinco, the podcast game show where we deep dive top fives. I'm Brian Ernst, your host for today's festivities, and in the den today is Mitch Brinkman versus Nathan Henenfent. Today, our contestants will reveal and defend their top five conversations to have at a friend's and co-worker co-mingled barbecue. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, get, yeah. Those, get, yeah get those patties on the grill. Get the conversation flowing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this one today, I have to be honest. You better be. You better be. Nathan, how are you today? I, I just like that. Mitch added the qualifier that he had to be honest about this one. When he said he was excited for the previous episodes, <laughs> totally lying. This but one today, is in. He is totally yeah. in on this one. Th- th- this one touched a deep, deep inner core sort of honesty about myself that I think will come out. And I hope the listeners at home will enjoy. So <laughs> so before we introduce the show a little bit, so what is your uh, both of your backgrounds at, at either co-worker or family barbecues? How many of these have we attended? How frequently do you look forward to these? What's what's kind of the uh, the backstory here? Well, I have been to probably a smaller amount of barbecues than the average person. Mostly that's based on my extreme lack of popularity on a social level. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, if we know and anything. Then, and then also my my infrequent employment history hasn't helped out here. So I think maybe I'm, I'm going to be fighting an uphill battle against Mitch today. Well, Mitch has a birthday party every single day of the week that he needs to attend with the uh, <laughs> amount of fam- uh, friends and family that he has. So... Um, you, you know, to be honest, for me, a, a, a family barbecue, which all my family's back in Minnesota, that's a very different um, thing. That's that's uh, like there's some anxiety in there. I got to I got to tell each and every aunt and uncle, each and every cousin uh, my whole life story for the past five years. Um, and I have to reassure them that, no, the gun violence isn't reaching my neighborhood um, in Chicago yet. And uh, no, no, I didn't. I didn't see that fire that happened uh, in a neighborhood four four miles away. Uh, but a friends and coworkers barbecue. Those I have been to, those I do enjoy, and I have a mucho, uh, mucho experience at those. Um, love, um, people probably don't like it, but I love commandeering the grill silently, like <laughs> someone who hosts a barbecue but doesn't know how to f- fucking cook their food. I love getting in there and just be like, oh, well, yeah, let me just uh, finish this off for you. And then someone gets like a perfectly grilled chicken thigh and then just like they ask for a medium rare burger and they get a medium rare burger and then the host is out. So it's probably very <laughs> rude, but um, you know, when you go to a place, you don't know a lot of people, sometimes that helps to become known and make friends. So well, in a previous episode, you let us know that you were a people pleaser and there's nothing more pleasing than taking over someone's party and kicking them off their own grill. So. <laughs> All right, folks, before we get into the top five lifts, as a friendly reminder, don't forget to stick with us till the end of the show where I, Brian Ernst, will give you my fast five send off where I will rattle off the definitive list of the top five names of future presidential libraries. And for those of you, if this is your first time in the Uber Cinco Den, let's wake you up out of hibernation with a quick rundown of the rules. Each player in the den has spent time with today's topic, arranging their top five answers in order of importance. Those answers have been submitted to the host who will moderate the game, awarding points to the player with the most poignant answer. Starting with their number five choice, we'll move up the ranks until we reach each of their top answers. But if both contestants happen to have the same answer on their list, well, we have an Uber stand out. You will hear the official Uber Cinco siren, and both players must reveal their answer and what number they ranked their submission. An Uber stare down is all or nothing, with one player earning three points. After all answers have been read, the host will reveal the final score. All right, and as host today, uh, of course I am entitled to institute a house rule uh, for today's game, which of course comes from the scrolls lost at the ancient library of Alexandria. This particular sentiment comes from a document written at the beginning of scholarly endeavors. And as we take this stereotypical soundtrack built upon decades of Hollywood tropes and misappropriation, I leave you with these words that have been translated many times over the years. Hesitation equals selfishness. Or as we translate them one final time, shit or get off the pot. Today's game (laughs) is going to start with Nathan's number five. Please give it to us, the top five conversations to have at a friend's and coworker co-mingled barbecue. Go for it. The approach that I took to this is that this is a strategy on how to win the barbecue. Ooh. I'm not going to have fun. I'm going for victory. (laughs) 
<laughs> and and can, can I just say the approach I had to the podcast today was to win the podcast. So yeah, <laughs> we're in good company here. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So uh, so we've got your your barbecue. You've got your two factions of people. You have your coworkers. You have your personal friends. Now, most people would tell you that this is an opportunity to to get the the groups flowing together. You know, introduce a few people who might have common interests. A lot of people will leave making new friends. That might be a traditional way at how to look to uh, what a good barbecue would be. But that is not going to win you the barbecue. So the thing you're going to want to start off with is just the work conversation. You want to talk just about work. So you want to split the line, you know, split the, the factions down the middle. On one side, you've got the people who know what the hell you're talking about. On the other side, you don't. Us versus them. You want to You know, a house divided against itself will not stand. You're going to create a little chaos. This is going to make you the liaison between people. You're going to want to, after you do the work story, you're going to follow it up with a deeply personal story you have, a connection with somebody there that nobody from work will have. And so you split them into two camps, thus making yourself the the de facto liaison between. So now Mm. you are immediately the most popular person at the party right off the bat. And, so, and, and and you also get to do one of those things where, and I, I love doing this and I know a friend's mom always does this when she connects people. She's like, oh, I need to connect you with this person. You 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 say hello to your friend, Eric. Eric, come with me. Come with me. I need you to meet someone. You grab Eric by the arm just above the elbow lightly and lead him to uh, someone I'm like, Eric, Carla, Carla, Eric, you two have in common. You both come from, come from the state of Washington and you're interested in birds. All right, thank you. And you walk away and then you're just like just connecting people <laughs> yeah. throughout the barbecue. It's a, it's a great feeling of power mm-hmm. when Absolutely. you become the social architect of the situation. There was one barbecue I was at where this happened to me where um, this was, I think, about six years ago. And I was with a few friends and like so they knew everybody who was there and I didn't really know anybody. And this girl walked by and I was like, oh, man, that girl. was Yeah. You know said some positive <laughs> things uh, and and anyways they're like one of the girls i was with my one of my friends like knew her somewhat but this it was a huge party it was like had outdoors was completely full it was a three-story house everything was full one bathroom now this poor girl was on her way to the bathroom which obviously had a line and then about three minutes later <laughs> i see across the the backyard my friend dragging this girl by the hand through the crowd and i'm like oh this can't be ha-. and she literally went and grabbed her out of the really long line for the bathroom pulled her across uh to meet me and that was that was how my introduction was it was not like hey here's this really nice guy it's like hey you don't forget your bodily functions you have to talk to this guy <laughs> <laughs> well my first follow-up question for that is did you deliver was it a was it a meet cute or a, a, a nice friendship blossomed or did you did you bomb we dated for about two months. Well, oh, see, how about <laughs> that? That's worth uh, not being able to get your piss out on time. <laughs> two solid was, months uh, uh, with the hen infant. She was she was a very nice person. Yeah. See, who 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 would have known? Who would have known if it wasn't for that uh, someone taking that Mitchell approach of dragging folks across <laughs> the party and forcing people to meet? I'm I'm curious. After you tell a personal story, as you mentioned earlier. Um, later at work, do you prefer it or do you like uh, a colleague then tell you, Nathan, I never knew you had such a traumatic history with, you know, Labrador retrievers, you know, or like whatever it is. Um, I mean, like, do, do you like to bring that back to the workplace to then sort of make deeper friends or is this all just a ruse to literally win the barbecue? No, this is, this is a ruse. You want to, you want <laughs> to keep that. Okay. You want to keep the power that you, you know, you okay. let people in a little bit at the barbecue from either sure. side. But you don't want to concede all of that territory when you're actually at work. You still want to maintain sure. some power for when these situations come up in the future, which they will. Sure. Interesting. I love that. You know, if, if you take out the word work and put in the word like family Christmas, that's kind of what that's my approach as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That is a solid approach to uh, that first number five. Let's move on to Mitchell. What is your number? Sure. Five? Yeah. So this one, um, I... 
uh, I, I'm, I'm characterizing these types of conversations that you can have at a barbecue that I enjoy the interactions of. Um, and if you haven't figured it out yet, uh, people who listen to this, I, I, I'm a big, I love food. I'm really obsessed with it. I like talking about it. Um, really into it. So this first one is called Food Friends. It's that conversation where you don't know the person and they're probably the boyfriend, they're the spouse or a, or a partner of like a friend of a friend already. So you just, you're absolute strangers. And then you find out like that, you know, the neighborhood they live in. And so you're like, oh, you live in Grafton Village. Oh, dude, you know, I love that little sandwich place. That's yes. Yes, man. That is that good. Oh, it's, it's incredible. Right. Have I tried the turkey? Oh, my friend, my friend, you, I, you know, and then of course you can't remember their names. You're like, buddy. Oh, my friend. <laughs> Got, uh, have I tried the turkey? <laughs> I try that turkey once a week. Okay. Yeah, no, no. I've had that turkey. And they're like, yeah, that is good. That's good. Yep. Uh, and then there's like, what, do you like other sandwiches? And you're like, ham? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll eat a ham. And then you just, then you think back to your visit to that sandwich shop. And then you're both basically just working down the menu together. It'd be like, egg salad? Yeah, I'll do an egg. Yeah, sure, I'll do an egg salad. I like that. Yeah, pretty good. Um, sh- should have some dill in there, you know? But you keep doing this and then maybe you mention another neighborhood. You're like, oh, have you been to that coffee place that's right around the corner? And they're like, yeah, yeah, they do. They Their coffee's hot when you order it hot and it's cold when you order it cold. It's great. You know, it's good coffee. Um, and then and then there's that time where you're like, oh, 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 my drink is done. I'm going to go get uh, another beer. And they're like, okay, yeah, do that. And you're – but you're drinking your beer faster than normal the whole time because you're like, this conversation has an expiration and then so you leave and then when you come back, they're gone. Or if they leave, you leave. You know, it's like one of those things where you're like, we're just filling the air. Um, and really what's sad is that – maybe this isn't sad. I don't know. This is me as a person at a barbecue. If I know someone's neighborhood, I'm going to try and connect to them by referencing restaurants they may have gone to. And it may feel like a real relationship. And maybe 10% of the time when I've done this at a party, because I can do this with like most neighborhoods in Chicago, some in like maybe New York or San Francisco, some random cities I've been to. But so little has that turned into an actual better conversation, you know, later on or an actual friendship. So this is like a placeholder um, conversation, I would say. Maybe it's earlier on in the party. Um, you know, you're dipping your toe into the water, trying to figure out, suss this person out, um, how far you can go in a conversation, maybe what what topics are taboo, which ones are imbalanced, those kind of things. Um, so that was that was my my um my my top five. Or also, you know what, if you're not drinking, if you're at a party, maybe you're eating chips, you just you just pretend you have to pee. You're like, oh, I gotta go pee. And then, you know, <laughs> that's that's the classic exit move. Am I right there, right? Classic exit move at a barbecue? Definitely I, a classic exit. I, I like to just go all in on that one and and insinuate that a very severe case of diarrhea is coming up then <laughs> you're then the you're guaranteed more, the more detail the better yeah for sure. the for the ruse sure. uh mitch my first question here is uh have you ever lied about a place that you have and, and this mutual person have actually ate at the same place before just to kind of fill the conversation gap like no no i haven't been there but you know what i yes i have i'll i'll, I'll be honest right. yes i have i um it would have been probably uh, some friends of mine from high school or not high school, excuse me, college, um, running sort of like the like the, the like the finance crowd. Some of them, and so some people I was talking to, and and the person seemed nice enough, but also like I I, I didn't know much of anyone else. So I was like, yeah, oh yeah, I've been there, yeah, there, and I just sort of like it's what's t- what's terrifying is pretty easy just to mirror someone in conversation, and then they think yeah. you're connecting with them. <laughs> it's true, it's true. All it takes is just a little bit of listening and a little observation. You can get by pretty quickly. So, uh, I, I, I painted myself into a corner with that one time very, very badly. It was, <laughs> uh, it was somebody. I, we were in the same school, but we didn't, we didn't, we didn't really interact. But he had this like it was a blog or something that was sort of successful, and and he had mentioned it, and it was like he was like you haven't by chance had to like read this. I was like, and I was just like agreeing thinking that would get me out of the conversation quicker and i was like yeah yeah he was like oh which one like which review did you read and i hadn't read any of them i was just like <laughs> ah. so i you know i had to just go to my old standby and uh feign some <laughs> diarrhea 
<laughs> I just hope at that party people are, are chit chatting. They're like, Nathan's had diarrhea eleven times already in the first hour. <laughs> he must be wearing a very high level depends uh, product right now. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. Nathan, for bringing up diarrhea so early in the conversation, I was only going to award you two points, but you get the full maximum three points for that one. All and right. uh, Mitchell, I I was going to give you two points, and yeah. then uh, you started talking about how this is a conversation filler, and I was like, oh man, he's just wasting time with these conversations. So I was going to go down to one point. But then you saved it with your honesty about lying. So I'm going to bring you right back up at two points. So, <laughs> oh, thank you with, very much. With, so. with his honesty about lying. Yeah. So, <laughs> that honesty about lying goes a long way with me. Yeah. I don't mind if you I don't mind if you lie if you're honest about it. Be honest about it. <laughs> Tell me that you're lying. <laughs> All right. So let's just go uh, hop on right back to Nathan for your number four. Number four. Uh, this is the self-deprecation. And mm. I, I find this is going to work best if you're in a scenario where you're the employer and you've brought your subordinates, your uh, underlings, your minions mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So everybody's come to your house. You're without even wanting to, you're going to be flaunting your wealth in, in their face. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to take the George Clooney method. I don't know. If you guys are aware how, you know, George Clooney is a, he's a prankster. He's a jokester. Uh, but he's also suave and charming. What he likes to do is he likes to tease people who are at his level. He likes to tease the Brad Pitts and the Matt Damons of the world. He likes to just really tear them down. But then when he's talking to people who are like at a lower station, you'll see him compliment them and, you know, just make some joke about himself. So you would say like, uh, you know, oh, yeah, that boat, uh, that boat in my driveway, actually, you know, it's not the one I wanted. This one, my, my brother-in-law gave it to me and it's already got 50,000 nautical miles on it. And, like, <laughs> you know, my my the new Bentley, like, yeah, I mean, it, it, we, we got the Bentley, but I'm so jealous of my neighbors who's got the Aston Martin that only runs on 18 year old scotch. You know, that was the car I really wanted. And, <laughs> so you just you want to you want to make sure you're you're. Uh, Talking up the people around you, complimenting them on whatever they bring, whatever, uh, you know, whatever clothes they're wearing. And, uh, you know, you, then you might want to say that, uh, you know, you oh, I'm wearing this old thing. And then you trip and you fall face first into a jello mold. You just want to bring yourself, bring yourself down to the level of your uh, employees that you pay 10 percent of your own salary. <laughs> <laughs> This is, you know, this is a delightfully, um, so one, we do know, Nathan, when you do run a company, you're going to pay your employees, uh, shit, which, you know, (laughs) you got to turn a profit. I get it. I understand it. That makes total sense to me. Um, but you assume, this is just, this is just advice to people who've already succeeded so much in life. Sure. But, but you're saying that, that, that guys like me. Guys that that roll up their <laughs> sleeves and put in the work every single day. You're saying guys like me enjoy Jello molds all over our shirts. I, I'm not sure if I agree with that. I don't know. Um, maybe a nice uh, whipped cream, you know, uh, splotch, you know, from a from a, from a souffle. Maybe yeah, I'll do that. But I don't know like, a Jello mold. I you know I I I, th- I think you're pandering a little bit to the working class. I just like to say Jello mold. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mitch likes to say souffle. We've revealed a lot about our true characters. <laughs> Stop calling uh, out obvious things, Brian. <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a. Ugh. All right. Well, yeah, that's, I, I, step two is the the Clooney method. That's when you're in the the position of power. You go with the Clooney method as your step two to win the barbecue. Well, I think we all want to be able to pull a Clooney one point in our lives, so. Uh, beat that, Mitch. Let's get your number four to see if you can better number, George Clooney. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, my number four is um, this is the conversation with um, the person at the at the party who uh, they, they have to be unattached um, and uh, they are they're like they're like, they're like eerily magnetic. You know, and they're beautiful. Like, and so, and th- this, this could work for like a woman or, or, or a guy, like, or whoever, you know, wh- just, but this person has just something about them. They have it. They are, they're maybe not the center of, of the party in terms of like entertainment, but everyone kind of is always kind of watching them because they're just, they're just kind of captivating. And, and you're lucky enough to be, to be talking with them, you know, and, uh, and, 
like they're just like you they're, they're just you just want to look at you just want to be around them of course there's an immediate physical attraction i mean that that that's that's gonna that's gonna happen um but you feel lucky to talk to him because you're the one at the barbecue who gets to talk to the hot person you know and they're talking to you and you're having a conversation you're covering topics and you get the idea like this might actually go somewhere and then like maybe you start thinking about it a little too much, but you keep drinking your beer and like that, you know, that kind of helps deal with the deal with like the uh, the anxiety maybe a little bit. Um, then you find out some things about them and it starts to turn and sort of like the delicious apple you're biting into. Turns out maybe there's like a worm or two inside. Uh, and um, from personal experience, this person – they share the idea that the country will get what it deserves when they elect Trump, and they would like to see the country burn itself down to learn a lesson. And you don't know, you're like, wait, do you want, wait, so you want all these people to suffer to learn a lesson? And they're like, hey, you know what? I mean, I guess. I mean, that's what we need, right? And then you're like, oh my God, what place of privilege are you coming from when you can say something like this? And then you're like, okay, well, all right. So, like, if you, if you, so you don't support, someone like Trump, but then you're like, okay, so you must be like a, a Bernie fan or maybe Hillary in, in that, in that case in, in history, maybe uh, Elizabeth Warren or like maybe Joe Biden, uh, you know, begrudgingly, but then like, no, 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 I don't support them either. I'm just, you know, I'm independent. And you're like, no, you don't get to be independent in this situation. You don't get to <laughs> want to watch the world burn and just stand back and be cool and fine with it. And you're like, you're so hot. How are you so crazy? You're so fucking hot. What's going on here? How do you not? And then you find out that they're a tip baiter on Instacart. Have you guys heard about this? No. You, When you order on Instacart, you put in, I'm tipping 40%. The person goes and shops for you and they're like, wow, this, this person's going to tip 40%. I'm going to choose their order first. They bring it to your house and then Instacart allows you to change the tip up to like how, like an hour or two later. And then they bring the tip back down to like 1% or zero. What? And they tell you this and you're like, you are a goddamn monster, but I can't leave because you're so hot and I might kiss you later. I don't know. And you're like, God, I hate myself, but like, I, you know, I'm, I've been in this conversation for 45 minutes to an hour maybe. And then, but but then you're like, you, are you really that bad? And then they, they like pull up their phone, like, here's my Instacart, uh, you know, app. Here are all my receipts. Look at it. And you're like, wow, you are pure filth evil. And then you find out later they were like 12 beers deep and maybe not everything they said was true, but like they showed you those receipts. So like there's some evidence of it. And then kissing them like no longer sounds cool, you know? And you're like, but and I, I don't know. And you're just left like discombobulated, but you felt like you flew close to the sun, but it was like the bizarro sun. I don't know. So yeah, that's, that's the. All right. I got, I got a question for you here, yeah. Icarus. What? Yeah. <laughs> What was what her name? Of- <laughs> <laughs> what kind of conversations? I have no idea. No are, le- idea. are leading to showing Instacart receipts in the middle of a party. That doesn't that seem like normal behavior. Obviously, well, this person is crazy. So, yeah. Well, you know, in in times of uh, of of insanity in our country, you know, you can you can hop from topic to topic to topic. Correct. And uh, you know, you guys know me. Sometimes I can free associate pretty pretty wildly, and so um, <laughs> I'm, you know, transitions aren't always heated, and um, and so I I you know jump onto another topic. And again, I, this was also I should mention this. Of course, well, this will explain it all. This was a St. Patty's Day uh, parade oh. day party. So yes, as I said, you you know, twelve beers deep. Um, you know, perhaps no one's telling the truth or revealing the deepest, darkest layers of themselves to, uh, you know, 20 minutes before a complete stranger. So, um, yeah, I went on a, on a wild ride here, uh, with this individual and, uh, I, it, part of me, like, part of me felt like I was talking to a serial killer that was like in a straight jacket, you know, like a Hannibal Lecter situation where they're like, you know, they're like in a little cage, but you're just like, you want to, like, you want to examine more and ask more questions and you just can't believe what they're saying they're believing as well you're, you're an inquisitive guy you're 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 a, the definitely the cross examiner in any conversation especially when there are complete uh competing ideals sure and and, there, and, so. and, of, and of course you know and then and then if someone's face 
is hot you're like well you're hot and then you just want to like stay you know talk I, to him so i yes. have i have one big question so did you kiss the uh, tip baiter seven and a half what sorry <laughs> i said that big was, qu- i said I'm big sorry. question um, i'm bad <laughs> i'm bad I'm did, bad. did you sorry. did you kiss the tip baiter did you no. do it no good no yeah, well no. That is good to hear. Like, what's what is where is the line? Like, what's the worst thing you can learn about a person at a party and still kiss them? Because I, yeah, I think tip baiter that has to be an pretty bad, an immediate uh, red card, straight red. Yeah, I, you know, personally for me, I the the the, um, the higher levels of inebriation I reach, I also the 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 more intense justice I feel inside my bones, and so (laughs) someone someone could just be like. Um, you know, um, uh, 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 I, I don't like basil in my marinara sauce. And I'd be like, we're done. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm going to burn you to the ground, pal. You know, like I'm going home. So like, you know, I don't, um, but in that case, a tip, that that's, that's, that's pretty evil, you know? And of course this person coming from a place of privilege, um, at, earlier in the conversation, I found out, you know, what suburb of. Uh, I believe she was from Kansas City, but you know, wealthy suburb, all the privilege, all the opportunities in the world, and like you know, taking advantage of this kind of of this um, workforce was you know pretty pretty horrible. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. all right. So Nathan, I think uh, self deprecation is, is something we can all relate to, and something we would like to do at a party. And yeah. plus, you you brought up Clooney nice and early again too. I mean, between you go from diarrhea to Clooney, those are two great topics to bring up real early. So I'm going to give you two points for that one. And then Excellent. going over uh, to uh, Mitchell, you know, I was going to give you two. Um, I was actually going to give you one because so you're just you're you're thinking with your penis, and that that's all that's all it started first. But know what? Then you turned it around. And you learned a great lesson. <laughs> so I'm going to turn that back up and. Uh, because you you didn't go for the tip, Bader, I'll give you the maximum three points because uh, I'm inspired by your story. Holy cow! Wow, that's thank you very much. No problem. I love dishing them out. Let's uh, let's stick with Mitch uh, now sure. for your your next one here. Yeah, um, this is one of my this is one of my favorites, and I experienced this um, a number of times. Like I'd say probably almost five, five, three to five times in my college and then post uh, soon after college, post college life. This is the, this is the couch surfer from around the world conversation. And if you guys aren't familiar, couchsurfing.com is a website. You, you, you can go on there. You can say, this is my couch. This is what it looks like. This is my apartment. Please come and stay. It's all free. You know, you can travel around the world for free and stay at people's homes. And then of course as well, meet their friends at, at get togethers. And, um, this, I, I, I'm a big fan of this idea. You know, if you're able to sleep on a couch with, you know, if your back can take it, you know, more power to you. Um, but it, this is really a great friend generator. And I would say that um, for the best, the best instances of this conversation, it's crucial that the friend that the person staying with is an acquaintance, you know, are like they're and they're, they, so they don't, they don't know each other. And like, maybe it's like day three of them being in the country so they're kind of uneasy drinking buddies. Like, you know, they're not like attached to the hip or anything like that. Um, and also this means that like the host isn't like, oh, this is my new friend and they're possessive over them. It's kind of like, you know, um, you know, Gary can do his thing, you know, Gary from Germany or whatever, you know, Gary can do his thing. He's just, you know, he's a free man. Uh, I'm not going to try and like look out for him or um, um, uh, cater to his needs or whatever. And so you just get into it with Gary from Germany and, uh, and again, as you said earlier, I'm inquisitive. I'm curious. I'm asking about, you know, what town he's from in Germany. I'm asking about the beer. Um, I'm asking about, uh, germ, uh, beer purity laws. I'm, I'm probably telling him at one point, there's a lot more American beer better than German beer. He rolls his eyes, but we continue to find, uh, you know, common ground. And, um, this continues on for the whole night. Um, you know, would we have to go to the bathroom? We actually do. It's not a lie. Uh, because we're, because we're drinking those, those Hefeweizens or some, you know, like we're, we're enjoying each other's company, but we find each other again throughout the party, you know? And maybe I remember Gary from Germany said he had an eye for those, uh, you know, those Tostitos lime chips. Maybe I bring in some chips, you know, like I'm, I'm really trying to cement this, this relationship. We're going to be friends too. We're telling, we're telling each other this, we're going to be friends. We're going to hang out. This is going to happen. When I'm in Germany, I'm coming to stay with Gary. When he comes back to Chicago, he's staying with me next time. Um, and we leave. Like, perhaps we walk together. Granted, we're in Chicago, you know, in my in my story here. 
We walk together to a hot dog hut nearby. We get dogs. It's 1.30 a.m. Then we go our separate ways back to, you know, our sleeping spots. And then I never see him again. Oh, oh. God. Ouch. And that's oh. the beautiful capsule relationship. Maybe I hear from my acquaintance, hey, Gary from Germany said he's thinking about you. And he had a lot of fun that night. And he said, next time you're in Germany, look him up. I'm like, yeah. And yeah. then you never go to Germany. But I haven't been to Germany yet. So Sometimes it's I best know. to just leave these things as perfect as, the, you know, it'll never live up to the memory that you've created. It's absolutely true. Absolutely true. So, uh, and I think also in these situations, people like Gary from Germany, they're, they get to experience a whole nother level of like stardom at a party. It's like, Ooh, you know, here it's in America, people are like, Oh, he's from Germany. So you immediately are interesting mm-hmm. and exotic and people want to talk to you and, um, Yep. People have questions. You know. I really miss living in England where I was the foreign guy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to try at all. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my, that's my, uh, that's my uh, number. Was that number three? Number three. Well, that was yeah, your number I, three. Yeah. Uh, one, I'm going to ask, is, is this a true story? Yes, this has happened with um, uh, 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 friends from uh, Australia. Uh, actually two friends from Australia and then also a couple guys from France and um, I believe an Argentinian guy as well. So, so th- yeah. this, is, this is where you have played host and hosted your couch for other people to stay on. No, I, I've, I've never, I, I've never been um, brave enough. I don't know if that's the word, but I know I've never host anyone, but it's my friends who've hosted people and, the, and gotcha. they bring them to shindigs and then, you know, we just fall in love with each other. So and the opposite, but, have you ever been brave enough to couch surf? somewhere else while traveling i haven't again i'm a chicken i don't know what it is like i think if um if i was traveling alone i think i would i would be way more down to do that or instead of traveling with um my girlfriend um you know because and, and, and couch surfing is, is a pre-air and airbnb type thing and it's also you definitely it's it's kind of like the um the alternative to a hostel it's, it's, it's free. It's, I can, I can kind of figure out my own way. Definitely for the person who's traveling alone where I can see if you have a companion or if you're going with a group, Yeah, this doesn't make sense. You might as well all pitch in for the Airbnb, but couch surfing has been around for a while. Yeah. So, um, well, and, and it, it, I feel like it takes on a different vibe if you're, you know, over 30 and you're going to stay on a 22 year old's couch, you know, somewhere. Um, but, but I don't know. Just think about of the the life lessons you could be bringing to their barbecues while you're couch surfing <laughs> on their couch. You're you're the interesting guy now. That's it. I mean, you're excellent. you're a, you're a guy of interest, maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You guys don't want to watch that. You, know, you guys want to put on bad boys. <laughs> That's what's gonna make this party really liven up. That's right. a past episode callback, Brian. That is that is bold. I love it. That's what I'm here for. All right, let's move on to Nathan for your number three. All right, this one you're gonna have to do some homework. Mm. Uh, you, oh. you're gonna have to get some spreadsheets. I'm, a, I'm gonna deduct a po- I'm gonna deduct a point already. I don't want to do any work. <laughs> well, this is the medical history conversation. All right. Now, not oh. yours. You don't want to do yours. Well, you're gonna, <laughs> trust, you're gonna trust you're, me. Nobody wants that. You're gonna want to. <laughs> You're going to want to seek out your friends or, or coworkers that are most likely to overshare about recent medical issues. There's, you know, this, the overshare about medical thing is a common thing in like uh, Christmas mm-hmm. cards. Sure. So you're, you're going to you're going to want to do a little recon. You're going to put together your spreadsheet. You're going to want to rank illnesses by disgustingness, amount of bodily fluids mentioned or excreted. Uh, then you're going to want to rank people in age because people's filter at about 50. Their filter for this just starts to go away. And you'll mm-hmm. just the details get more and more egregious. So then, much like we're doing here, you're going to want to rank your top five sick friends and coworkers, and the <laughs> likelihood they are to gross everybody out. You're going to start with number five, and you're going to wait until everybody has a plate. You want everybody to be eating, <laughs> and then you then all you have to do, like the, like the dominoes, like a roll, you just go up to your number five and you just get them talking. And then it'll be like the dominoes falling because then you're, you'll find your number four and your number three and your number two and your number one will do all the work for you because they will want to one up the next person. So all of a sudden you've got five people at this party one upping each other in grossness while everybody's trying to eat immediately knocking all of them several pegs down. So you have just leapfrogged five people on the social ladder with one <laughs> small, subtle little move. 
That's this impressive. Is, this is it's surgical. Uh, <laughs> thank you. That's fun. Um, I love it. I love it. Um, well, I gotta ask if this conversation is happening. What is the grossest thing that you can then say? Is what it a- your fake diarrhea that you have all the time? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've I've already played that card. Everybody's everybody's moved on past it. Now, see, I, I would only play the fake diarrhea card when in a in a pre dinner scenario. Yes. Oh, of course. Nobody. Yeah. I don't want it to do that when everybody's, you know, holding a, a bowl of baked beans in their hand. You know, I'm, I'm a classy guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what What have been some of the most fascinating medical histories you've learned while participating in this scheme? Um, I remember I was at a I was at a party when I uh, I was pretty young, but I was at a party when I learned what the word polyp means. Um, <laughs> That was that was good. Um, <laughs> I was unaware that it was possible for people to live with only ten percent of their uh, lower intestine, but I learned that while I was eating a hot dog. Um, <laughs> this was those were actually at the same party, but it was it, it was the same. It, it was I. It, it was a. Uh, it was a distant family thing, but I I remember yeah. very clearly. I was holding food and trying to eat, and they were. Yeah, it, it it got pretty gross. Uh, isn't uh, isn't Sidney Pollop an award winning um, <laughs> professor at Johns Hopkins? Isn't that? I, I believe you're right. We'll have to, okay, we'll have to fact to... check that one later. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, the, this, I think this, you're... the Sydney Pollops that was a that's a volleyball team from Australia, I think. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Which, so, which actually p- people confuse the Kevin Polyps, but they're not nearly as good. Um, so. so a similar thing happens at uh, usually at, at, at normal family dinners. Uh, so my, my mother is a nurse and she would start bringing up just topics of things that would happen at work. And then you just get that that angrily th- anger ridden thing from my father. The fork is up at his mouth and then she says something and he just... <laughs> <laughs> at dinner really we got to do this here i'm eating my mashed potatoes and we're talking about cysts what the fuck's going on because <laughs> i none of us are usually affected by that that's usually my mom and my and myself on this side of the table and then the other half is my sister and my dad and during these family dinners like we had this guy today hippocratic coath out the window no names yeah. were said but <laughs> so like the, it's like this thing happened and oh my god and secretion and this and blah and we're like come on what's going on I'm I, like, <laughs> I I learned I learned what uh, circumcision was at a Christmas dinner wow yeah oh what a magical season yeah it was wow. a relative of mine who worked at surgery it's like well we had to do this and this and a circumcision and just like went over and it was a new word to me and I was like so I leaned I can't remember who I was, I was like what's circumcision and they're like it's surgery oh, in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, they, they, they tried to give me a very brief answer, which was only very confusing for me. <laughs> and I had to have it explained in great detail much later. It was the best Christmas ever. <laughs> now, I, I was say in that Christmas season, did you take your, your junior year high school finals before or after the, the dinner? <laughs> oh, they were always after. <laughs> oh, so it was after January. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go back to Mitchell here. Since uh, you had the the wonderful couch surfing story, I was going to oh. give you the maximum of, of three points, but uh, but since you haven't done it yourself, and I feel like I want to challenge you, you need to go out there and do the couch surfing thing yourself. Yeah. I can only award you two points because I I just really want to see you get out there and be the people pleaser at somebody else's barbecue. Fair enough. And teach teach these twenty two year olds how life is done, and then uh, Nathan, I was going to give you one point for just utterly disgusting disgusting me talking about polyps but because this was a uh, part of your your victoria sneaky plan to win a barbecue i'm gonna go back up to the maximum three points because i like i like your sneaky approach oh yeah so, that's great so uh let's bounce over to uh mitchell for your number two sure yeah so my number two is um i tall i i i, I tall i call this the um getting to know folks uh a little better chat um and this is like AKA the perfect, perfect buzz sex chat. Okay. Now this is going to happen. It's towards the end of the barbecue. Um, you, you most likely are, are a good friend of the host. I think that's why you're there kind of till the end. There's only about six to eight people left, maybe 10, but like that feels a little much eight, I think is a good number. Um, 
Memorial Day, maybe, um, or, uh, you know, it's like people have things to do tomorrow. It's not going to be crazy. Um, so you're not getting blotto, you know, um, and uh, everyone's like at that perfect buzz level, like kind of feeling fun. And from this, you know, comes just a couple, a couple simple prying questions, you know, like boxers or briefs, you know, boy shorts or a thong, you know, right away in the morning or just after lunch, <laughs> you know, uh, and then the conversations get, get, it gets stolen. It gets whisked away to an exotic Island where nobody feels judged and people are comfortable and they're just sharing their intimate, you know, thoughts and feelings about sex, you know, and then, you know, then, then you find out, has anyone in this group slept with like a touring music musician? Um, was it just, <laughs> was it just the front man? Was it the drummer? Was it the, you know, what was the lead singer who like, she was also playing keys and playing the cowbell. At one? You know, what was it? Um, or like what type of media was on or playing nearby when you lost your virginity? And if you and if if you didn't have any media on or nearby during your virginity, are you a serial killer? Because I feel like everyone <laughs> should have some sort of music or television or movie on when you're losing your virginity. I don't know. I just the stories I've heard, I feel like that's crucial when that happens. I um, mean, who hasn't lost their virginity to the classic uh, cowbell keyboard player that's always playing on the radio? <laughs> well, well, yeah. Well, and, and actually, I have a friend who lost her virginity to Fern Gully, which is one of my favorite virginity stories. Um, that's a good one. That's a that's a very I would never mix those two together in my brain. And now they for, are forever intertwined. Right. And and of course, just like because I'm a goddamn cliche, the Big Lebowski was on in the background when I was losing my virginity. So, um, you know, some old white uh, country singer was serenading us, I think, as we were um, <laughs> enjoying each other's company. I lost then, my virginity in complete silence. <laughs> <laughs> his name complete is Nathan Enfant. He silence. lives at 2108 West. <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> but then also. You could, no, no, actually, that's not true because you could hear the disappointment. It was, <laughs> it was deafening. <laughs> Oh, was you were, were you like are you were you like me come on he was like i'm sorry nathan i can't uh, i'm sorry to let you i'm sorry that was your that was Where's your penis talking from I, I this, this scenario? that was his penis talking I, I i shouldn't have done that but then also <laughs> hold on but i gotta finish i gotta i gotta round out this conversation then also maybe you figure out if any of you at the party belong to the same sexual family tree you know like do you have <laughs> oh the, the kevin um, bacon sort of game Yes. Yeah, exactly, uh -huh. exactly. And are you are you connected by a total nut or a real peach of an individual? Oh, oh. interesting. Oh. <laughs> These are the conversations only Mitchell would have at a party. I feel like this is a, a unique approach, especially when you get the Fern Gully story out of people. I mean, you know, really, like, the, the, also, to be, to be fair, this is when people's faces really light up. Because, like, when they feel comfortable enough it's to true. really share their, you know, share it all. And, you know, it ends up being also filled with the most laughter possible because, Because you know, you're talking I, about something naughty. Well, no, and, and, and you know. People are and, buzzed. And, well, yeah, and also people feel good because they're letting their guards down and everything. So, I don't know. I, th I think letting your guard down is a very valuable thing. So, Yeah. And, and, and any questions or maybe uh, anyone, I don't know, any thoughts on that, guys? <laughs> nope. Okay. No. I, I, know the, I know the conversation you're talking about. It does, like, it's, it's, it's always, a, even though if you've been through it before, it's always kind of a surprise when you're like, oh, these people that I literally, you know, two hours earlier, you may have, everybody may have been up to like, yes, yes, hello, nice to meet you and you and you, hello, yes, yes. And then all of a sudden, you're hearing very, very personal, intimate details from them. Um, it, it does make you feel welcome in a way. Uh, yeah. it really, you know, it feels like you've bonded and, um, yeah, like that, it's a pretty common conversation. That's, I, I think the unique approach something. here, especially if you can get that conversation out of the co-mingled group of work and friend friends, if you can, br if you can get everyone comfortable down to that level, whether it's host or guest that you can bridge the divide and get, and get these, uh, steamy conversations out of some loose people. I think that's uh, that's the best way to go. Your 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 use of steamy and loose, I, I take some <laughs> uh, some umbrage with, um, but oh, you know oh. that's that that that's okay. I just feel like you're characterizing us as like sexual deviants, you know, and we're not here. Not for that, at all. So. Not at all. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's my I'm yeah. Not, 
Hey, you brought That's- up Fern Gully and Big Lebowski sex. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Those are two uh, classic films. All right, that that that's my number two. Thank you very much. All right, Nathan. I see your... my time. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Nathan. Your number two. All right, my number two. Simple but absolute classic, The Backstab. Ooh. So hmm. you just wait. At every no party has perfect attendance, so you're just gonna want to uh, wait until you realize who isn't gonna be there, and then you're gonna pick the person who's not gonna be there that you are closest to. And you are gonna throw them under the bus. <laughs> I don't. I don't care if it's your spouse or your partner or your mother or your boss or your child. You throw them under the bus because <laughs> you are gonna bring people together with forging a common enemy. You are going to start the gossip. You're gonna pick apart all their little foibles and and faults. And you're just going to get everybody to go in on them and we can go around in a circle and everybody's going to have a turn just making fun of this person. They'll be the butt of the joke. But you are the one who is leading it. Once again, you are in the driver's seat. (laughs) You are the boss. You are winning the barbecue. You will take the person you love the most (laughs) and you will you will bring their character into question for the maximum amount of time that you possibly can. And you will be in the lead. You are we're nearing the end of the night at this point. And you are out in front. You can uh, you can kind of start coasting, getting ready for the final sprint because you've got a comfortable lead built up here at the expense of someone you care deeply about. This is also the time in the night where you're taking photos and then texting them to this person. Look at how much fun we're having. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you missed out on. Pictures like this, me and this guy. What's going on? <laughs> I, like, I like how devious this is. I like how... Well, uh, I guess here's a question. Who is uh, the person closest to you that you have definitely thrown under the bus for this scenario? Can we mute Mitch real briefly? <laughs> I, I, I figured it would be Mitch. No, no, but bring it. I love this. This I, is like... I think, Mitch, is a- I think Mitch needs to hear this as the uh, resident person who's always late. Well... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we were. Wow, okay. I, oh, I, I, I guess we, fired. Here we go. I guess that, you know, I just, I just, uh, I got everybody to go. We, we all went around the room and we we listed <laughs> our top 10, top 10 shirts that Midget wears that we just, we just don't think are that flattering. Um, <laughs> we did that. And then we, uh, we said top, top 10 words that Mitch pronounces in a really annoying way. We did that wow. one. Wow. Um, sure. <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm curious. Were you able to forge a better bond with anyone over um, pooping all over my my <laughs> reputation? <laughs> oh uh, no, I'd say uh, I'd say that if anything, uh, it, it made the situation completely untenable with with dozens of people in our collective social groups, and many lives were destroyed. And uh, okay. bonds will never be re- reforged between uh, people who otherwise would have led happy and lasting and fulfilling friendships. But uh, mm. but for a few minutes there, I seem pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So I, I need to bring this into the uh, the point category here. For being so vicious and so hilarious, Nathan, I, I, I have to give you the three points. For this one, and then Mitchell, I was see give it you, works. <laughs> yeah, you're very good at this. I was going to give Mitchell uh, only one point for being so lewd and talking about so much sexual things at a party, but then I I ripped on him pretty hard and I felt bad, so I feel like I need to give a point back. So I will award you two points for the buzz sex conversation at a party. Don't feel bad. Don't no no rip into my rip into my ideas here. I'm this is I'm I here will, to defend. Don't also, worry, do you I, also do you want to hear what Nathan says about you at parties? Oh, because <laughs> sure maybe you'll worse. rethink that three points. <laughs> I'm sure it's way worse. If, if nothing um, else, if th- nothing else, this is going to make sure that the two of you are always on time to events that I hold from now on. <laughs> <laughs> you are really playing the long game here, aren't you? You are wow. changing your entire dynamic for wow. for the entire future. All, all, all I'm here is to do is to be curious and to explore and learn about people. And Nathan is here to tear them down and put them in little boxes that he can keep on a shelf somewhere. I just want that on the record. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Uh, Mitchell, since uh, you only got two points for that last round, why don't you go ahead one more time and give us your number one, please? Okay. So my number one um, uh, is this is this is a conversation. Uh, you're, you're standing in a group of people. Maybe it's three or four people, maybe five. 
you're not really saying much. You're just kind of listening. You're taking it in. Active listening, very important. Um, but then your mind starts to wander and then someone asks you a question about what they've been talking about and you don't know and you're like, oh, um, actually, you know what? And you look over to the table of food and you're like, that ear of corn has my name on it. And you uh, grace the exit. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is all about that conversation that I have with myself in my own head. This is my, this is the, this is the most intense conversation that I'll have at a party all night, about whether or not I need another beer or hamburger or slice of watermelon or bowl of potato salad or bowl of chips or glass of whiskey punch mm-hmm. or ice cream cone or, um, or, uh, grilled broccoli or, you know, chicken leg. And it's, it's, you know, it's easy going at first and then the, like it, it becomes more tenuous later on. Um, perhaps on the third glass of whiskey punch, it's now, the, now it, my brain, we're not conversating. He's yelling at me. He's just saying, eat more goddamn chicken now. And it just, I, I keep eating and eating and it's good. And I, you know, the, and the chicken's got that good char flavor on it. The little, you know, the, the blackenedness that's going on. Um, the potato salad isn't too mayo Maybe like someone did the right thing and put some Dijon and like maybe a little olive oil in there, you know, mm. um, Maybe someone took the time to make a trifle, you know, layered with angel food cake and whipped cream and berries, and they pull it out three quarters away through the party, and my belly does not need it. My brain is like, you better mash that inside and enjoy it, you little pudge boy. Go, <laughs> go. <laughs> um, and uh, and then the next morning, my brain's eyes like, why'd you do that? You're so stupid. Why'd you do that? So um, that's my that's my favorite conversation that I have. Uh, at a party um so sometimes actually the parties with with less food there's less voices going on you know in my head so there it is but well i I think that's pretty normal i I remember uh we went to a family barbecue once um we all went as a family to a family friends barbecue and there were the exact number of burgers for the number of people who were there like the person uh, didn't overcook any. That's the kind of person like, oh, we're having eight people at this party. I will buy a pack of eight burgers. Yep. And it's just like, no, 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 no. Barbecues are where you go to treat yourself horribly. <laughs> 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 that It's a buffet of food and you are there to gorge. And it's like, okay, yeah, you might have one burger, but then you're going to have a hot dog and maybe a Polish and an Italian sausage and two ears of corn and oh, oh, there's barbecue chicken. Definitely going to have that too. You're mixing meats from all over the animal kingdom. Mm-hmm. If someone brought out fried calamari and deep fried alligator later too, you just mix it all together, whatever, depending on where your barbecue is located. That is. Yeah. I say you can tell this is a Chicago podcast right now where you're like, <laughs> just four types of hot dogs, <laughs> but hamburgers. You know. I mean, you can get the beef from down the street. You got Bona right there. You can yeah. get the Polish. Don't, 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 no, no, no. But, <laughs> but that's just, that there's nothing worse than getting to the party where there's no extra food. Um, because you gotta go up for seconds at a barbecue. If you don't, why are you living? <laughs> you need to go up for seconds. It's rude not to. If you don't go up for seconds, why are you living? That's the quote of this episode. I think if you Going guys on don't a t-shirt. mind, that's a yeah. t-shirt quote. If I ever heard one for this episode, pin it on the board. We won't forget it. Pin it on the board. I ha- I have a, a brief story. Uh, Go for it. It wasn't exactly a barbecue, but it was a it was a family event. This is probably twenty years ago, and my some factions of my family had gone through a healthy eating slash vegetarian uh, phase, and there were things like pizzas would be ordered that would have no cheese but pineapple on them. Um, it was like strange stuff. So, anyways, we were having lasagna night, and uh, I was late because I. I had some prior commitment and I get there and they're like, don't worry, there's plenty of food left over. And I see the first, the first lasagna and it's, it's a spinach lasagna. And I'm like, oh, of course, but luckily I see next to it, there's the, the classic sausage or, you know, the, the meat lasagna. I'm like, oh, great. Mm-hmm. And then there was a third lasagna that was empty. Now I took, I took a nice, big, huge heaping pile of, the uh, lasagna that I believe to be the meat lasagna, 
went back, took an enormous bite. Fucking broccoli. It was broccoli. (laughs) They had already ate all of the meat lasagna and didn't save me any. This this has been at least two decades. Oh, my God. And I am still still hot under the collar about this one. Never let this go. Never let this go, Nathan. Revenge will, will be mine one day. (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, since you're all pent up and you got the energy now, I feel like we need to hear your number one while you're rolling into it. My number one is the I have to be some or I have somewhere to be exit. <laughs> so mm. this is this is how you've you've laid all the groundwork. You've divided and conquered. You've uh, positioned yourself between the two factions of people. Uh, you're the alpha alpha dog at this point. So here's your final exit strategy. So you're going to be, want to be really vague and you're going to kind of want to plant this information into people's heads that you have to leave early. Create scarcity. Classic mm-hmm. capitalist strategy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, I'm going to leave. I have to be at this other place. Whatever. Leave an air of mystery about it for a while. Keep dropping some hints that there's like something sort of exclusive that you're going to that they haven't been invited to. And then slowly start to let people know, hey, I'm going to you know, if you guys want to go, like, and you start exchanging numbers and uh, yeah, yeah, don't, don't say it to, don't say too much to anybody. Yeah, yeah. And so you, you keep doing this to the whole party. <laughs> wow. Now then, you know, you're going to text people the details later and uh, then be the first person to leave. And now I'm going to, I'm going to quote the, uh, the world's most interesting man from those Dos Equis ads from years ago. My favorite one ever was when his thoughts on the two party system and his response is the after party is the one you want to attend. So <laughs> you're, what you're doing here is you're creating the after party. You know where the after party is. So anyways, you leave, you start texting in, information gets filtered on. If you say my pants at the end of this, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> not, not my pants, but okay. you, you end up texting in the information to your place where you have an almost identical barbecue set up. <laughs> and you get the whole guest list over there they're already drunk they're already loosey goosey they're ready to have Mitch's uh, buzz sex talk mm-hmm. but that doesn't happen at the barbecue you originally went to it happens at your party which will be remembered as the after party and the true event of the evening when this happens my friends you will have won the fucking barbecue <laughs> Jesus I mean I ugh. That's the it's long like, game. It's the place the long game, and he comes through with the with the V. This episode, listening to Nathan's five through one, has is the exact same experience I had watching the Last Dance. The exact same experience. The this exact is, same experience. This is this is the, literally the nicest thing you've ever said to me, and, and you know, oh and you God. know it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brian, I'm sorry if he doesn't win this week. Then this this whole thing is rigged and it's not real. So. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, I got no follow ups there because you just completely cle- clearly laid out a, a path to victory for winning any barbecue for in, in your five to one here. So I got to mm-hmm. give you the maximum three points for this round here because you just uh, you rounded out great. And Mitch, I gave you three points as well because you know how much I like meats and, you know, I got to go up for a second or third yeah. or fourth time at the local barbecue. I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't playing to my to my uh, listener. So. <laughs> Well, you know exactly what this belly wants. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch, I give you 12 points. Okay. And Nathan, you're walking away with 14 oh, points. Yeah. And the oh. winner today. That's the highest score that anyone's achieved thus far, Nathan. Wow. I mean, I think I think that reflects on the quality of the list. I, so I, I think I, it does. I, I made a list about winning, so I intended to win. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you, uh, mm. uh, Brian, please save us from this smug. Please give, give us your fast five. I think we need to write a book too about how to, how to win these barbecues. We'll sell it on the store. Nice merch we got here. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we can't go anywhere today without me revealing my fast five future presidential library names. So my number five, the Donald J. Trump hooked on phonics, really big, really great, no problems at all, perfect library located in rural Wisconsin. (laughs) (laughs) Known to locals as the DJT, this presidential library houses the nation's collection of finger-painted artworks. Attendance has been dwindling and the library is looking for a buyer. It's been on Zillow for over 600 days at an asking price of $1.2 billion, (laughs) even though it's estimated to be worth only about $10 million on a good day. (laughs) 
<laughs> Baboom! <laughs> Woo! Number four, the Joe Biden Institute for Social Social Distancing Memorial Library, located just minutes from the downtown Dover Amtrak station. <laughs> Following a rough first term that didn't see the COVID-19 pandemic truly coming to an end until the next election cycle, the Biden administration took social distancing head on by providing Joe with a head and shoulders massage doll that he strained deep tissue therapy into while delivering Oval Office addresses. A nation was soothed every time old Joe grunted through the darkest times with firm eye contact. (laughs) Number three, the Barack Obama II Electric Boogaloo Library in Honolulu. After Uncle Joe's successful reminder that Barack was cool, term limits were removed and Obama served three more terms as commander in chief. Since his library in Chicago was already built, the second was slated for Hawaii with a research facility in Nairobi, Kenya, just to fuck with Republicans. (laughs) Number two, the Katie Porter Cross-Examination Library and Electoral Approval Facility in Irvine, California. After being elected the first woman president in 2040, California's current representative from the 45th District continued her good name with her tough but fair lines of questioning. While in office, she approved the No More Bullshit Decree that was signed into law her second term. It states that all elected officials and lobbyists must pass an eighth grade constitution test, an AP U.S. history test, And for good measure, a driver's test. (laughs) (laughs) And the number one future name for a presidential library is the Tom Cruise Research Library for Continued Badassery. Yes. Located located in the aptly named Top Gun Valley near Sector 7 on the lunar surface. (laughs) This was erected after shooting several films in space. Tom Cruise became the first actor turned president since Reagan and the first president to be elected off planet, conducting his entire campaign via live stream launches in his personal rocket, answering fan questions as he circled the globe in orbit. His campaign slogan, Gravity Schmavity, became an instant sensation, securing him 96% of the vote. The research library is for experimental stunts and future films, as all films other than action were outlawed in the John Wick Act of 2046. <laughs> <laughs> and that is this week's Uber Cinco uh, from Irving Park has been Nathan Hennenfent. And uh, Stone's Throw from Wrigley Field has been Mitch Brinkman. And I have been Brian Ernst. And as BizBear always says, butter, dill, and lemon is the only trio a fresh cut of salmon needs. Auf Wiedersehen and adios. You've just listened to Uber Cinco, a production of UBK Studios. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your fine podcasts from. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, please visit our Patreon site at patreon.com slash UBK Studios. Every little bit helps us keep the lights on and the bill collectors at bay. Keep tabs on us on all the social media at UBK Studios, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see that we really are just a bunch of good Midwestern boys. Yeah.